And we are now live. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this live stream with me and my special guest today from the UK. Uh, there has been, uh, well, there has been some very interesting stuff going on. Uh, Amy, she is with me today, and she was arrested by the police here the other day for telling someone, quote, have a gay day. And uh, she gets the police all over her house. And I don't really know what to say. I mean, this is today, as you might know, some stuff has happened with Tommy Robinson. I'm not sure how much I can talk about that since there is a gagging order about, uh, about that. Maybe we will talk a little bit about that later. But today's focus is about Amy. She was arrested here just a couple of days ago by the police for something completely insane. So she's here to tell her story today. And you might have seen her videos out on YouTube and it's been on Periscope, but she was arrested. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming today, Amy. Thank you, Peter, for having me. And uh, I'm, I'm still, you know, it's been a couple of days since, since the whole thing happened. And I'm still, I'm still not really sure what is going on. And um, obviously with what happened with Tommy today, it's, it, Things have gone. It feels like everything's gone up a notch. It's we are in extremely frightening times for law-abiding people who just want to question what is going on in the country. It is um, it, there doesn't seem to be anybody uh, that has any sense, any sort of power that is taking control of of the madness that's going on with the police and their absolute abuse of power that they're they're using and i it's just it's a yeah it's all gone mad and i i, I actually still I, I don't really feel that secure right now i mean which is to think i'm in england 2018 and i feel insecure in my own home not because of criminals but because of the because, because of the state. Because of the people who are supposed to be looking after us or you know protecting us. I'm actually concerned because of what they did two days ago that they could just they could come again because what they came two days ago for was a complete uh, total fabrication of it was an imaginary crime. So. Yeah. And you and you supported this uh, day for freedom uh, thing that ha event that happened uh, as well. Uh, you can kind of get a feeling that that might maybe have something to do with uh, with this. Who knows? But from what I you told me earlier that uh, I mean, what what happened that got you arrested? Uh, you told me that something happened at the parking lot, and you told someone uh, have a gay quote have a gay day. Can you tell us a little bit more about what happened there? It was a just a normal day at a supermarket, car park. I got a bit fed up because I've, I've got a lot of physical issues and I use a, I need disabled bays for parking. And I've, I just get so frustrated when I see people parking who are able-bodied, they don't have a badge and they just park there because they feel like it. And I just, you know, most of the time I don't say anything, but just that day I thought, you know, I saw one person already do it. So the second person, I said to him, you know, I called to him to say, you know, do you know that's a disabled bay? And he, whatever his day was like, I obviously said the wrong thing. And he came to me very insulted with how dare I question him. And he was very tall. He was about six feet tall and probably late 30s and very angry. And he just was so uh, instantly annoyed that I didn't really... I don't really recall too much because, I, you know, as as the event happened and when it finished, it really wasn't that big a deal as far as an issue. So I didn't sort of record everything in my mind in case I needed it because it was just a something enough. Anyway, he was cross and as and he was rude to me. So as he walked away, I just said, "Have a gay day." And. And you think as well in the old Queen's English, the word "gay" actually means happy, uh, jolly. Uh, so really, you didn't say anything. You just said basically, "Have a happy day." That's basically all you told him. You know, it's like, it's always you know, when you when you kill with kindness. You know, when you when somebody's really mad and you instead of re responding with anger, which just you know doesn't get anything, if you, you sort of diffuse things by cracking a joke or being super nice. I mean, sometimes that's more powerful. So. 
by saying what I said, you know, it was, yeah, that's what I said. I, I, I just said it. But, and I didn't expect his reaction, which was, again, he was just, he was just mad. He was in a bad mood. It must have been a bad mood. He must have got out the wrong side of bed because he came back at me and he was very close, he was probably, you know, standing and yelling at me. And I said, could you just step back? Because, you you know, he was in my the space, you know, my space. I said, could you stand back or stand back? And instead of standing back, he stood forward. He came right into me, bent over. I mean, it's, it's towering over me, finger in my face. And I really thought he was going to hit me. So, I, I mean, I just instinctively pushed him back, just, just to, you know, just pushed him away from me. And I said, get away from me. And... He was yelling, and just at that point, the security guard just happened to appear between us. Said, "Okay, you know, calm, calm down, calm down, calm down." And uh, you know, the man said, "Oh, that's assault," and he started to walk away. And I thought, "Oh, come, give me a break, you know what?" And uh, so he went off, and he got his phone, and the, the security guard asked me if I was okay because obviously he saw what happened, and he said, "Do you want me to be a witness for you?" And I said. Yes, please. You know, I mean, if I need it, but for what? I didn't really know. It wasn't, because nothing had actually happened other than. It wasn't, really, it wasn't really a huge deal. It was just a small matter in the public. A verbal encounter. Plus, he, you know, came at me. So, anyway, so I said, yeah, I had to, you know, sit in my car while he, while I, yeah, because it was, it was, it did shake me up. I have to say, it was a bit, it was very intimidating. So I just needed to gather myself. And the next thing I know, in fact. I now remember is that he came, he reappeared, this guy, and started taking pictures of me and my car and my dad, and I'm like, oh my God, what is he doing? Anyway, then he disappeared and you know, the day went on and my life went on and nothing happened until about two weeks later, Sunday afternoon, sitting in my flat on my computer and without warning, my living room window opens from the street and it's a policeman set. <laughs> And he said, "Can he open the door? I mean, he didn't even knock on the window. First. He didn't nothing. He just opened my window, which happened to be the same window that somebody broke into five years before when I was in bed at you know, four o'clock in the morning. So that window, that particular window opening, really, you know, really freaked me out. But anyway, I, I thought, what? So I just quickly thought, okay, this is weird. So." When weird, pick your phone up and start filming because you just don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> you know, especially when it comes to the police. So I filmed it, and it was the most bizarre encounter because I had two uniformed officers on a Sunday afternoon, and I tell you what, you know, you would have more luck finding truffles in a forest than seeing two uniformed police officers on a Sunday afternoon in the same place. So... I thought, what's going on? And I let them in. I posted the video on YouTube because it was a bizarre encounter. They wanted to talk to me about something that had happened. And I thought, okay, okay. Yeah, I knew what, I knew what it was. I was like, really? Really? So anyway, it was ridiculous. They wanted me to say what happened. And they were filming. You know, they had the little cameras going. I'm in my hallway with these two officers. They're wanting me to tell them something. So... I completely thought, no, alarm bells went off. I did not. I just said, well, what? What? What did I say? What did I do? What? What did I say? Exactly. And they wouldn't tell me. So I got them annoyed. They got frustrated. They were threatening me with, uh, I said, what did I do? Did I, I didn't break a law or anything. I said, yes, you did. Uh, um, Public Order Act section. They didn't even know which one. It said five, four, something like that. You know, something like that. <laughs> Whatever. Something to do with homophobic. And I said, what? What's a homophobic? What? They wouldn't tell me. And then they said, you know, well, you, you just can. Just, I said, how would I know he was? A, how would I know he's homosexual? <laughs> uh, we didn't have a chat. You know, it was a personal life. Anyway. And they said, I kid you not, the conversation on YouTube, I feel it like it's got 40,000 views or whatever, because it's, it's it was an unreal conversation. Anyway. They wanted me to say, I wouldn't say it. I kept asking them questions. They got fed up and they started to go. And they said, right, we're going. And as they were leaving, I said, wait a minute, you know. I said, well, if you're not going to cooperate, we're going to investigate this to the fullest extent. Because that's right. I asked them if they'd spoken to the witness. I said, did you speak to the witness? Before they came to me, which was two weeks, you know, they said, no, we didn't speak to the witness. Why would we speak to the witness? I said, oh, gee, I wonder why. Maybe because 
You wouldn't be here if you'd spoken to him. So, 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 so let me get this straight. You got into a brawl with, well, a little bit of a small yeah, fight. Peter. So, so, God, are you media or what? A brawl? Someone, I, so, someone, someone attacked you, basically, in the parking lot. Yeah, he and, yeah. and And you basically just, more or less, just told him off and uh, were actually very polite, said, have a gay day, which actually means have a happy day in the, in the old English. And, have a gay day. And, and, and then the police come, then a couple of weeks later, the police comes to your house and barges in and uh, says that you're homophobic because, because basically you were nice to this guy. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know what to say. What, what's no, going on? Hasn't even finished yet, Peter, because that was then. Then they so they go off saying they're going to investigate to the fullest extent, and I'm like, what? Because I said, have a gay day. You know what the hell? How much of an investigation is that? So they go off. I hear nothing for another few weeks before I get a letter saying, could you come for an a, a informal interview? I thought, what? But what the hell's that? So I went back to the shop to find the guy who was my witness to find out what happened, if he'd spoken to the police, because I thought, wait a minute, you know, I shouldn't be getting this letter because if he would just say the guy was aggressive and came for me. So I went and he didn't really want to talk to me. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, you're my, my witness, remember, mine? <laughs> he didn't really want to talk to me. Anyway, I've sort of persuaded him to talk and he um, reluctantly told me that when he tried to tell them what happened and that the guy was being aggressive, um, he said the police didn't actually want to know. They didn't want to know about what he did. They just wanted to know if I'd used one hand or two to, to push him away, right? And I thought, oh, my God. So it's, almost, so it's like they almost made up their mind who was the... Yes. Who was the extra what sort of extra judicial justice they already made a mind up in advance so who was the guilty one before any court proceedings that's so uh, I, kind of uh, scary that explains why i've got the letter because they didn't want to know the truth so i thought okay and uh i actually completely spaced out on the you know interview thing i missed it completely the lawyer phoned me up the one that i needed because i don't have one i asked for one and um so they sent me the paperwork. They, I had to reset the date to go to this, you know, what do you call it, interview, which I don't even know. And it said in this paperwork that um, I had committed a homophobic hate crime. I'd apparently, <laughs> this is hilarious, oh, homophobic hate crime and common assault. Okay? Common assault. And that apparently I'd said, you guys or and you you gays or you type of people and now get ready for this peter i apparently put my finger to my lips my lip and wiggled my <laughs> hips <gasps> which i didn't do it's like what i put my finger to my lip and wiggled my hips what I mean, you couldn't what's, make that. What, what, what's, that what's, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> what, what kind of crime is that? Uh, yeah. I forgot. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. up in the new thesaurus of, you know, the hate crime, homophobic. So I thought, oh, my God, what? Oh, it, did they say it was homophobic for you to put your hand on your lip and wiggle your hips? Well, they didn't specify whether it was because I said, you guys or you <laughs> type of people. Okay. No swearing. You know, I didn't swear, no name caught nothing. It was you guys. I mean, it's outrageous, Peter. It really is an outrage. So, and I swear to you, this is, if I could find the piece, you know, I don't have the paperwork. Oh, wait, no, I don't have it. It says what I actually apparently said, because I didn't say it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's so funny. And of course, so, and, so anyway, so apparently as well, right? Not only, I, I, my, my, my terrible, this is what they're accusing me of, is that, not only did I say those that, but when the police came to talk to me about the matter, I didn't let them in. Even though on YouTube, you've got a six to eight minute video of me letting them in and having a conversation with them. So I thought, wow, they really don't like me. So I had a date for the next interview. So when I went to the next one, I wanted to record it myself, you know, have my own recording. Well. Mm -mm, Ixnay on the recording, eh? Because 
you know, the police officer didn't want me to do it, said no. I said, can you tell me where it shows, says that I can't actually have my own, where does it say it? Well, that was it. Not doing it. Go. Be gone. I said, but no, I'm here to give my version. I'm here. Here I am. No, nope. go away. I said, no, look, okay, it's off. It's off. Look, it's off. I said to the lawyer, the lawyer, that my lawyer, I said, look, could you, look, it's off. Tell her it's off. Tell her I'm here. I saw what happened. I said, no. So I thought, right, okay, I'm recording this bit. So I started recording. I said, look, can you tell that? Say that I am here, willingly, ready to give my version, and the police officer will not let, because I knew, you know, it was going to be, didn't cooperate, you know, refused, whatever. I thought, no. Anyway, I told you not, I was banished. I said, so what happens now then? If you, you're not letting me do, you're not letting me give my side, so what happens next? Well, I'm going to have to speak to my superiors. That was it. And then nothing. So, uh, few weeks went by and so of course by that time I thought wait a minute so I needed to talk to my witness and you know he works at the shop so I I'm really I was just so puzzled thought wait a minute so they they pressured it they didn't want to know his story so I you know surely he wants to tell the truth what happened what he saw so anyway I just went back to talk to him recorded the interview I said and not the interview but I just was recording to say look please tell the you saw what happened. You saw him come for me, you know, and he said, and he said, but you said, he said, you said this, whatever, whatever I was supposed to have said. I said, but no, what did you hear? What did you hear? Your, he said, what? He said, you said, I said, no, you, you're a, as a witness, it's supposed to be what you heard and what you saw, not what somebody else told you. He didn't get it. And then he said, well, I'm both your witnesses. I said, what? No, oh, it can't be both. No, no, no. I mean, you could be separate if you observed something and say, well, I saw this happening. But you said you'd be my witness for what he did to me. He said, well, you're, you're, you're hassling me. You're, um, you're, uh, what was it? Well, these words, these words that people use that are just, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it when somebody gets pressure? No, wait, what's the Blackmail. harassment? You're harassing me, right? I'm like, what? No, I'm just asking you to tell the truth and just to let you know that, you know, because of what you said or didn't, they're charging me with things I didn't do and you know it. So, you know, it's harassment. I said, oh my God, now you're gonna, you're gonna tell them. He's gonna tell them. So, because on the record, it said when I'd gone to see him the first time, so I thought, oh, Christ. So I left, and that was a couple of weeks ago. And then Wednesday morning. What? They come My again. Door. My door. I'm like, what? Open the door. Oh. What? Anyway, it's the recording. I, I find it hard to watch it myself because I felt like I just stepped into psycho, you know, and I'm the words the guy. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that film. It's an old film. No, I don't watch much films. <laughs> horror film way back from the 60s. People my age will know what I'm talking about. So anyway, so there you go. So somebody was thumping on my front door, telling me to open the door at nine o'clock, quarter to nine in the morning. Said, what? Police, open the door. Open the door. What? So anyway, there's a five-minute video, and it was... I tell you what, Peter, you know, I stepped into the twilight zone of reality because, you know, they treated me as, as if I was some heinous criminal who'd done the most abysmal crime. They grabbed me, wrestled me to the ground with absolute no, not listening. I mean, I opened the bloody door because they threatened to break it down. They were going to break my door down. And because they, and they wouldn't tell me who they were, why they were there. I said, why are you there? Why, what, who called you? Why are you trying to get into my, why? Because they weren't talking to me like, excuse me, would I have a little chat with you? It was, open the door! They're brutally coming in. Huh? So they're brutally coming in. 
almost breaking down your door just they were gonna break my door and i thought you know i mean and they shouldn't have been what they were she wouldn't give me she wouldn't say why they were there nothing i said are you gonna i said through the door i said are you gonna arrest me i could tell by their you know the voice i mean it was a real giveaway of this isn't good this isn't you know can you have a cup of tea you know it's like no this is not good so i i said <laughs> i'm opening the door open the door and you know it just went from there they just as they were grappling with me my poor little dog was just like she thought friends were coming and then it was oh my god what are you doing to my mother jesus hello anyway it was horrible it was horrible it was traumatic it was scary they didn't care i mean the pain i tell you what it was just it, still it's still i cannot i can't I, you know i say it's just a horror of outrageous brutality from nothing and i couldn't get what was going on then they put the handcuffs around my back yeah you know, they just they handcuffed you round my back they handcuffed me in my saying i think i heard her say flight risk i thought what <laughs> you know you uh i can say uh, you don't look very much of a flight risk to me <laughs> you know, like you know these people i thought police were supposed to assess the situation you know be able to do a rapid assessment of the you know whatever they're doing and to be able to act appropriately well i can tell you when they were grabbing me and grappling with me, it was um, obstruction of justice, I think I heard. You know, I don't know what words were flying around in the air at the time, but it was just all, what the, uh, it was so, it was horrible, Peter. I mean, it really was horrific. And they put their bloody handcuffs on. I didn't even, I couldn't even put my shoes on. I was in my pajamas, my gym jams. You guess what? I was frog marched in pain and agony out of my place, in my bloody pajamas, to the police station. <sighs> they were, and it was a, a woman, a woman, a woman police officer and a man. And the two of them treated me so, it was disgusting. And I didn't know what I was doing there. I didn't know what I'd done. And I don't know if they mentioned a witness, interfere, uh, intimidating witness. <gasps> like, what? Witness? Oh, my witness? What? I kid you not, Peter. I'm not exaggerating. They took me to the station. Everything, you know, take everything. So, put me in a cell and left me for six hours without. So, so, they, so basically what happened, you had this argument with someone in the parking lot. In January. You, you said, have a gay day, which only means have a happy day, basically. And then the police come to you for alleged hate crime homophobia and uh, then you have apparently intimidated the witness and then they come and break in your door and put you in handcuffs and take you to the police station well i really have to say that this is starting to remind me of uh, stasi and uh, gestapo tactics this i mean this isn't what uh, i mean the british fought against the nazis uh, 70 years ago to kind of avoid this kind of thing now you have basically, I mean, pure Gestapo tactics going on in your country. It's it's so crazy. I, I don't have words. Fabricate, fabrication, fabrication, you know, intentional leaving out of details, which was, you know, the fact that he, I, you know, he, uh, you know, they got my witness to change his story. And I mean, if you read the, the you know, to read what they say, and plus it doesn't make sense because on the report by the way it said that uh uh you know whenever it was i'd gone and gave my name and number to the people in the shop they said wait a minute if i was a guilty party why would i give my name and number to the you know why would i do that i wouldn't want no, that to know you know unless it was i wanted to talk to the security guard who said he'd be my witness so could he give me a call when he's at work because i just need a chat with my witness so you know and this whole you guys, I can't really remember what it was. It was so ridiculous. The words, my, you know, they wiggle my hips. Like, what? I don't do that. And I don't say, I am not, I don't, I'm not in the habit of referring to one person as a you guys. You know, who's a man by himself. You know, he wasn't with somebody else. It was just him. So 
the narrative is so far, well, it's a lie. And the, the guy who And the, the guy who had his ego dented just decided to just abuse, to get beaten up. So they came up with a law to protect these people from being threatened. And he, he has the audacity because of his hurt feelings. And, you know, because I, 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 I was struggling to understand why a gay guy would uh, think it would be offensive to say have a gay day anyway I, I would have thought they would have uh, kind of liked that I don't know I well, honestly, they... you know I had the response was uh, because I, I, I've live streamed I live streamed mm, the police get me because I didn't know they were going to do that obviously I was just I was just you know gonna I just well I guess I had a feeling it wasn't going to be great but I really didn't expect excuse me to you know, I didn't expect that violence. The violent, the viol the level of violence, that the brutality, so excessive. And you know, here's the thing. It, it, in fact, it was a a person who had observed, saw that footage, and he saw, at a, on the day for freedom, at Speaker's Corner. I don't know if you've seen the footage, but I was this young girl, you know, nineteen, twenty something confronted me we were having a you know talk about the huh what i don't know maybe islam huh, and the problems and i and she was all you know in my aggressive just bah, 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 bah. i was trying to reason with her and the next thing you know she spat in my face well she didn't actually spit in my face thank god but she spat she spat and i just thwacked. She, she spat and ran but as she ran i thwacked her with my phone because i had it on a selfie stick in a nanosecond the police were on me like a fly on you know what i mean just from nowhere and grabbed me and i thought oh my god the the straight and they were grabbing me as a right i said wait a minute whoa, whoa, whoa. and you know it was it was so weird everybody around was worse they were stunned by what happened with the police getting me it was like they were th they were there using force and I, and I was, you know, I had my stick. I was like, get off me. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> it was just, it was really it's... sinister. Okay. So, and of course, uh, yeah, it, it, the, the, the things that obviously with the speaker's corner and me talking to the police, trying to tell them about the, the law. Can you read? <laughs> I'm going to say that to Matt. Can I, can I, can I read out what it says? what you're supposed to be doing. they didn't like that so there's a lot of um there's 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 in the air that everything is not what it seems and the response to what i have done is just totally really really not good and i'm telling you now i'm on bail okay and my bail condition is very simple. I mean, it's basically, I can't go to my favorite shop, which is the one, the supermarket, and I cannot speak to my witness. Trust me. I have nothing to say to my witness. Except, well, I do have two words to say to him. Both begin with DD, but I won't go into it. I won't, I won't spell it out. But, you know, it's like with a, it's, you know, the old saying with a friend like that who needs enemies. I mean, really, anytime anybody offers to be your witness for something where you're a victim of, just say no thanks, unless you get the signature and, you know. But it's, it's strange how the witness uh, changed his mind then from wanting to help you to not wanting to help you. Probably, well, I have a feeling the police maybe, maybe uh, spoke to him. I actually had a little bit of a similar experience ourselves in the UK. My parents, uh, their dog was poisoned by some far left know. extremists and... And they took him to the vet, and the vet said, yeah, this was clearly a case of poisoning uh, the dog. The dog barely survived. Uh, he was vomiting, paralyzed, he was shaking. Uh, he just fell down the stairs, paralyzed in the middle of the night. But luckily, he survived. Well, but, uh, and the vet said it was a clear case of poisoning. And then my parents uh, reported to the police. 
and then all of a sudden the vet changed the story. Oh no, maybe it's not a poisoning anyway. And the police were, yeah, we can, we cannot really say that this was poisoning. Uh, it could just have been a coincidence or wipe uh, washer fluid or wiper fluid or something. Blah 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 blah. Uh, so I kind of had a similar experience ourselves there. It's well, uh, is there right, Peter with me? I I went on a a year ago, just over a year ago, my first ever time to go on one of these marches in Telford, and it was against the raping gangs. I had a brick. I was you know just walking with the people. We got round the corner and there was the stand up to races and yeah, we're Nancy, you know, he was coming in, but they're only about 30 feet away. And so I was filming them going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And next thing you know, boom, my chest. This brick bounced off my chest. I'm like, oh my God. I tell you, I got up my footage on my on my phone. You can just see the brick. I mean, I didn't see it because I was looking that way and you know. Police were there, you know. I mean, I felt the. I mean, it was a pain. I mean, I've got that on. I've got everything on film. That's the thing, Peter. Everything I've got is on bloody film. Still doesn't do anything. The police got the son of a. There was only one thing thrown that day, and it hit me. And luckily, it hit me on my chest because you know when it, you see it flying through the air, it so easily could have just got me right in the head. Or, I mean, there were women and children and animals you know the babies in this walk you know the mar i call it it really was a walk not a march you know it's just a walk and this, they got him got him i think they were there and i thought right you know it's a done deal it was the only thing that was thrown only one thing that was thrown it got me police were right there got him you know open and shut case months went by guess what happened well they came up with a really good story. Apparently, the policeman who got him suddenly thought, oh, should I keep him? Apparently let him go for about 10 minutes whilst they, they sought advice. <gasps> and then they got him again. So that 10-minute window meant that they couldn't be sure that they got the person who did it in the first place. I thought, what? What? What do you mean you let him go? What? They saw him do it. They saw him throw the bloody thing. And they let him go. And I'll tell you now. And so the, so the CPS said no. I, I appealed. I thought, what is going on? The son of a bitch could have killed me. Could have killed me. Could have killed a child. He could have killed anyone. It was a chunk of brick that he lobbed from about 25 feet away. He just lobbed it in the air. Didn't care where it went. And they got him, let him go. And you know what? There was another one, a couple of, you know, I don't know when it was, a couple of months later, I went to it and I was filming the Antifa and there were a couple of people, it was about a distance away and the son of a bitch was there and he was laughing and he had, talk about, you know, with this identity thing, right? The guy was about six feet tall, long lanky hair, I mean, scrawny, as about as bloody, you know, stand out as you could possibly buddy be. No question of his bloody identity. Because he pointed at his head. He went like that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they had to hold me back. I was just, I wanted to go and I want to smack it. <laughs> the security wouldn't let me get him. And I thought, oh, I mean, I wish he just had looked like a, you know, five foot eight, brown hair, whatever, or skin, or something where he blended in. And yeah, okay, we're not sure. And do you know what happened, Peter? I kid you not. I got on film, another policeman who happened to be there, who told me they never let him go. He would, this, as it happened, you know, because they must have, obviously they have the same police. They have a sort of maybe a whatever going on these different things. The officer who'd actually nabbed the son of a bitch hadn't let him go. Never let him go. But they decided. We don't want to do this. This is not going to be good. So they let him. Oh my God, Peter! I don't know what it is. What is it about? What happened to law and order and right and wrong and arresting? It seems, and it's, it, it seems. It seems like it's kind of turned a bit on its head in the UK. Uh, that's the kind of vibe I'm getting, especially with. Um, 
I'm just going to bring up Tommy Robinson a little bit here now. Yeah. Uh, I am in Norway, so I don't have any gagging order. Uh, oh, I'm not sure you're in the UK, so I'm not sure if you uh, how much you can talk about Tommy. But I'm just going to say a few quick things here. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Well, I saw the footage, and the footage was him. They he got arrested for breaching the peace, which you know is for, and he was live streaming. Yeah, and the live stream has been taken down, I think, now as well, because there was a gagging order that came out saying, meaning that no one who is in the UK are allowed to report on what happened to Tommy Robinson. I'm uh, sorry, so, for democracy, excuse me, what? Well, I'm sorry, there's no freedom of the press in the UK anymore. You're not allowed to talk about And there's been countless articles that have been deleted. So at first, when this happened to Tommy Robinson today, there was loads of articles coming out on The Sun, Breitbart, RT, uh, Daily Mirror. They wrote articles, but all of them have now been deleted because of this gagging order. They're not allowed to report. The only article that's up now that I can find is actually from America, from the Gateway Pundit. Uh, my friend uh, Cassandra Fairbanks uh, wrote that article. Uh, so oh, I recommend everyone to go and read that article. So uh, yeah, Tom Robinson was was arrested uh i'm not uh, i'm not gonna say what i'm i'm not on the gagging order but i don't want the, this video to be taken down or anything so i'm not gonna say what happened next because that is what is under the gagging order uh but uh yeah everyone can easily find out what happened if they go go and check this out on twitter and youtube and so on it's probably out there somewhere uh but uh, no where is a solicit where is the defense where is a solicitor to say excuse me excuse me what was that you said what what no no he didn't do that so I let him go. What? No, that didn't happen either. Let it, I mean, I had a crap. I, you know, mine, I say, I, you, you, the chocolate teapot is a perfect, uh, you know, whatever you call it, analogy to give for how useful my solicitors were who were given to me, you know, what is it called? Uh, legal free, whatever. I can't remember now. You know, if you need a lawyer, they give you a lawyer. But the fact that they don't actually <laughs> want to defend you. Well, I don't want to defend you if you're on uh, if they don't like your opinions. It seems. I mean, uh, I know. Is it my hair? Is that it's. Uh, I mean, uh, just look at what happened to me in the UK, and uh, not many. I haven't gone very public about this for the safety of my parents, but uh, my parents received the death threats from uh, from Antifa and so on. And when I reported to the police, the police more or less said that it was our fault because racism, uh, so they wouldn't help us. So it's kind of. Uh, it, it kind of feels like 1994 is very much coming to the UK. It's well, it's it's already here. I mean, that's and yeah, we haven't got freedom of speech anymore. We definitely no. have freedom of speech. The and, press uh, are completely, uh, totally not in the sphere of uh, this civil. They're biased 100 percent to the government. I mean, it's just I can't. But you know, when the things when I say these words, Peter, I feel like wait a minute. What am I saying? No. Don't be silly. Of course, you couldn't. No, I mean, what? That wouldn't happen here. They, people wouldn't put up with it. But guess what? Yes, they are, and they have, and they're doing and they're, it. And they're celebrating. I've seen loads of leftists, oh. uh, neighbor people celebrating. Owen Jones is really happy that Tommy was uh, was no. arrested. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Anyway, my opinion is I don't support everything that Tommy Robinson says or does, but. Uh, my opinion is everyone has the right to freedom of speech, whatever you say, whether you're on the left or on the right. And uh, that is what they're doing. They're trying to take away our freedoms that people fought and died for back in World War II. Now they're trying to take that away. And um, I actually have a good uh, comment here from uh, a super chat here from Root HKR. Thank you so much, man. He says, uh, when will British pull their heads from their bottoms and overthrow the government, take a stand against this Marxist communist genocide of the West? Thank you so much for your for your comment there. Uh, I wouldn't uh, condone overthrowing any government. Uh, that's not uh, how how we roll. <laughs> but um, no. <laughs> but uh, no, no, no. Listen, here we said. My question. This is what is so disturbing, Peter. And this is why I never thought we'd get to this point. Is that I do I did think that more people would speak up. I didn't know the press would be so complicit. I did not be. I did not know that it seemed that, that everybody in the media, in every aspect, complies. You know, there's that. I, I, it is very sinister because obviously, if the media were on our side, we wouldn't be in this position. Well, the mainstream, the mainstream media is very much, uh, it's very much uh, on, uh, you know, on the wrong side for sure. 
but uh, you know, and that, I didn't, I didn't see that. I really, I was a bit naive because I really thought that there'd be enough people who had moral compass working, you know, within reason, that would prevent this madness from continuing. And to me, genuinely, genuinely, I see only one person in the world who is actually genuinely one of us that is Donald Trump, President Trump, God Emperor, I swear to God, he is the world's, the, the sane world's only hope of switching the tide back into, from away from the madness. Because we're genuine. Yeah, there's a few other countries as well in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Hungary, uh, Poland, they're quite good. I'm not talking about the ones that are, sorry, Yes, tr I correct because Hungary obviously that that leader definitely. But I'm saying to have an effect on on the greater world because obviously yeah. he's he's much more he's much more influential. You know, yeah, he's you know doing his thing for his country, which is just like so refreshing. But obviously, Donald Trump for me, he's you know changing. Well, the 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 Far East, he's just complete. You know, I remember not very long ago when Obama was in and they were talking about China, you know, they're building these islands in the sea and this, you know, military complex and, you know, old bloody little rocket man was literally firing rockets every other day. You know? <laughs> and it was like, oh, excuse me, anybody can say anything about this? Anybody? 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 No, no, no. Hello? Anybody? Until Donald Trump comes in. It's like... He's, he's really done the art of the deal, really uh, bringing <laughs> Rocket Man to a heel. But even now, even with this, uh, what's going on now, which no other, nobody, Donald Trump is in a league of his own. He is the supreme. He has actually the best president in a year and a half. He hasn't even been a year and a half. One and a half years. He has done more than probably the last five presidents put together in their entire terms, all together. What oh, he's yeah, done. Definitely. It is absolutely, and for the good, not, you know, not screwing around and, you know, just getting every, he has done an amazing job. And now even, I just, I cannot listen to the radio here. When I listen to the radio and they talk about Donald Trump, they're still, even after this amount of time, what he's achieved, they're still talking about him as some upstart, some, oh, it's just Donald Trump, you know, he doesn't know. He wants the Nobel Peace Prize. It's like, <sighs> no, actually, he didn't, he hasn't asked for it. No, it's everybody else saying he deserves it. And he does. But it's so, oh, well, see, it's all off. What does Donald Trump know? He doesn't, you know, yeah, he's hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, media, the media is constantly uh, attacking Trump nonstop. They definitely have a have an agenda that we, can, that we can see for sure. It's just outrageous. But anyway, listen, look, Peter, we are in a major crisis because I can tell you now with what's happened to Lauren Southern, with Brittany Pettibone, you know, the whole uh, generation identity who are incredible people who just want to save their generation's future, to have some sense of but it, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't even that long ago that things were normal, you know, much more normal than they are. And again, the other thing that I never expected, Peter, was as well as thinking that there'd be enough people in the press who would say, "Okay, this is not right." I genuinely believe I never imagined that the police would have this mindset. It's like they they have got a they're completely on the wrong side. I mean, they're not even then. I mean, it'd be one thing if they were objective and say, okay, not so good this side, not so good that side, we'll do that. But they're not even close. They're not no, even they, 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 they should be. They should be objective and uh, tackle and, and, and deal the same with anyone, whether they are on the left or on the right. But definitely seems that that is not the case. I mean, you look at the Swedish police, they are actually much more... You think of Sweden as being quite a bad country, but Sweden is actually much better than the UK now, I have seen. Uh, the Swedish police, they actually go after both the far left extremists and the far right extremists. Whereas the UK, they only focus on one group of people, and that seems to be the right wingers. Um, well, that's the thing. It's always, it's, it's, and, and when I saw it Speaker's Corner, okay, when I was talking, when I was actually, I say, when I, when I, I try to be reasonable, when I'm talking, I don't, I just do 
think, okay, let's just talk about this rationally. You know, it says this on this paper, you cannot do this. They seem to be doing what this says they shouldn't be doing. And so, when I, you know, when I'm pointing it out and the police say, yeah, we know, but, you know. Hmm. And you know that if anybody else was doing what they were doing, the police would be saying, excuse me, no, no, can't do that. There's where the problem lies. It's the total bias, which is unacceptable to the, that's all people want is just fair treatment. Well, and it's yeah, not happening. I think I have an idea why. Um, you know, the British police, there is this group in the UK called uh, Hope Not Hate. I'm sure you've heard of them. Uh, <laughs> they actually, they actually doxed I'm me. I have a like, spasm. I just almost just, you know, I have an allergic reaction to when they, I hear. They actually wrote an article where they doxed me and my parents' uh, addresses in the UK, and after that we got death threats and the uh, dog was poisoned. Uh, but uh, anyway, the the British police work closely with this hope not hate group, and guess what? The Swedish Defense Ministry. So this is the Swedish defense ministry, the Swedish military has come out with a new report where they actually mention hope not hate by name, saying that in a, in a report over in a report of far left violent extremists, the Swedish military has actually mentioned hope not hate in a report of far left violent extremists. And these and these people are working with the British police and they have a Labour MP in its uh, chair uh, on his board. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think they should. I mean, they, they should really condemn uh, and take distance themselves from them. But no, they actually work with them. They have close contacts within the British government. Yeah, there was not, you know, the uh, I don't know if you saw the, the last we did with the uh, with Red Pill Phil in in, uh, in Manchester with the police car that had did it have hope or hate on the side of its car or something? You know, mm. this, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, not yeah they um. Oh yeah. my God, Peter, we're in trouble. God help us. It's uh, it's uh, it's an interesting situation, and um, yeah, I have. A, by the way, I have a good uh, comment here from someone in the in the chat here, a super chat here from Candy D. Leon. Thank you so much. Uh, she writes, uh, "Let us examine our ways and test them. And let us return to the Lord." And she has a, a Lamentations three forty. God bless everyone. Have a good summer. She writes. Thank you so much for that uh, positive uh, comment there. I think everyone needs to need some po need some positivity here after what has happened, especially with your case. Find, let me see if I can find some. Uh, and I also want to give a shout out to you. All out of positivity in this room. I'm sorry, no no sign. <laughs> and I also want to give a shout out to Luke Warner, uh, who donated five dollar uh, five pounds as well. Thank you so much, guy uh, man. Really appreciate it. And uh, it helps us keep going to produce this uh, to pre pre give you this content. Um, well, thank you so much. And. Can I just yeah. say this to talk to you, Peter? Because I've admired your work. I've, I'm so <laughs> I've admired your work. That sounds like that. Honestly, you are a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, but thank you. <laughs> it's just it's, well, you're the eyes of Europe because nobody's reporting on what's going on over there. Nobody is reporting except you. I don't see. We never hear anything here. I mean, I don't. I haven't put my television on to listen to the news for about a year now because I just can't cope with the the lies. It's just it is truly sickening. And it just it's so surreal. It really is surreal to know that and it, I just I never thought of myself as saying any of this stuff where you just hear this conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, and it's just bizarre how widespread the apathy or apparent apathy, you know, if I go out in the street and I said, God, you know what happened to I say who, what? No, oh, isn't it great? Yeah, let's we can go for a picnic this weekend. Or well, what's on the television? The goggle box. Yeah, so so petty. And you think, no, oh, there's really big things going on right on your doorstep, and you're oblivious to it. You don't want to. You don't. They don't know. There's so much going on, Peter. And what you're doing, you know, I'm just hoping that. It's not, it, well, I know, I know, unfortunately it's going to get a lot worse. It's going to get a lot worse because it already has got worse and it's got to a point where I never thought we'd be, I never thought I'd be here having a conversation with you about police brutality, about completely fabricated things. I mean, 
because it's me and I know what happened and I know what I didn't do and I did do, I swear on a, all that's holy, I am completely, I did nothing wrong. Nothing. And for that, I'm now on bail and I, I feel, I, I feel that because of how they got me and I, actually I, they took my phone. Oh, they took your phone? Yeah, they took my phone. They took um, my, what? They took my phone. And that was my solicitor telling me, she told them. She said, I guess you want her phone now, right? I said, what? Well, that's, <laughs> that seems like a very good solicitor. <laughs> oh, she was like, no. I'm like, what? And then she said, yeah, and you better give them your pen because otherwise if you don't give them your pen, then they're going to, you know, get up and not see your phone for a year. And I'm like, oh, my God, what? <laughs> I'm thinking. I know they tried. They, they tried. They tried that with Lauren Sodden as well. She refused to uh, give them her pin. Oh well, they succeeded with me because I was by that time ten hours. I was. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't really matter because they have tools. They just hack your phone anyway and get in anyway. They just have a, they have a machine that just plug it into the phone and they get in anyway. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I, I have the remotely uh, silenced my phone. I just I don't think, uh, yeah I, I think the police have special tools they can just get into your phone just easily easily it's uh yeah it's uh, it's uh, interesting stuff going on but so they took your phone and I mean obviously now how do you feel now uh you must feel like scared or what's what's going on I tell you I I would not be surprised because I wouldn't be surprised at any time if I hear I'm now if I hear my door I, because I, I so far, when I was in the cell, okay, knew, knowing I'd done nothing wrong, being brutally arrested for doing absolutely nothing. And when I looked at the paperwork, according to the paperwork, the reason for my arrest was because of a vulnerable child. I, or it was a, a, for the safety of a vulnerable child or this. And I'm like, child? <laughs> what? Are you trying, what, what child? There's no child. So they fabricated the reason for my arrest was because of a vulnerable child. And I'm like, okay, you know, and they got away with it. And my lawyer told me to give the, I mean, I have I, nothing. I, I, you know, when you're in a cell and the people who are on the other side of the door don't give a rat's behind about your well being and you have no way of getting to the outside world. But for them, and it is the most, it just feels so, so the vulnerability, the powerlessness. And here's the thing that gets me. They have 23,000 uh, jihadists walking the streets in the UK. They have grooming gangs. They have thousands of young girls that's been uh, raped in grooming gangs. Yet they, the only thing they're interested in is going after ladies like you. Who just said have a happy day to someone and because i was homophobic apparently no, and, and there's, there's no police <sighs> there's no police if anything happened there's, there's, there's you know what i i did, did a couple of years ago there was an incident and i phoned up because somebody got beaten up in the street and i was a witness and i went to give a, a report and i said what took you so long and he said there's only six of us in the whole couple of counties you know they had to bring people from i mean this is a big area and they have no manpower it's been stripped so it's even worse peter you know not only are they not a, not even trying to tackle what the crime the real crime they are wasting god knows how much money on non-crime absolute nothing and even this whole this thing i've, I've only seen the rumors about this six years or something for you know hate speech my, my god all people ever talk about is how full the prisons are. There's not enough prison spaces for hardened criminals. Now they want to actually imprison people for like me. Like, oh it's, my God. You know, the world has literally flipped on its axis and we're still in the middle of this, you know. It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, uh, the story about, and, and no one in the mainstream media has talked with you about what happened to you. No, they completely ignored it, it seems. Did, has anyone contacted you from mainstream media or? Uh, there's only been, there's been, there's been a couple of people, one person is a freelance journalist, but I mean, honestly, Peter, 
because of what's happened to me in the past, I've had I've had uh, you know the stories coming up about from way back. I had a very you know it's a, everybody could find it. I I had a very very traumatic time with my health, mental health because of my physical health. I lost my careers and I was suicidal. And um, the media basically the first time I got, I got arrested because I tried to end my life and. I was rescued from the sea three times, and when I got to court, the prosecution said 30 times. Three, 30. Big difference. Because they said 30, I was sent to prison. Because my lawyer didn't challenge the number. So mm. the media went with what the court said. The media exaggerated, the media lied, didn't want to know about the truth. So I have a bit of an allergic reaction when anybody talks about media, even if it's, you know, with my story, I just don't believe that they're ever going to say what actually happened. It, it just feels as though, well, I just don't trust, I don't, well, I don't trust anybody now, but I mean, the media especially. So yeah, I've had a couple of people reach out to me from, the media, but I just, I, I don't, I, I was going to talk to Tommy. Tommy was going to, I was going to have a, uh, he was going to come and see me. Mm. Well, that's not going to happen now. <laughs> <sighs> and, I'm, and what I don't understand Peter, is where are the, what, this is what I'm saying, I've said it again, I'm going to say it again, especially with somebody like Tommy, who's, you know, he should have a decent solicitor. Why hasn't the, the solicitor questioned the charges, because it's obvious with what he was told on the street and what was told to us when he got to where he was, which was completely different. Why didn't anybody say, excuse me, no, 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 that wasn't what, no, you said he was arrested for that. And now when he gets into this area, you know, when he comes two miles away, well, same thing. I mean, you know, my thing, they, they changed what I was arrested by the time I got to the station, it was something else. So. Uh, but I didn't have anybody. But I would say it's somebody like Tommy, you know, this, you don't even have to be a great solicitor. You just have to know basics. Well, if you get charged with that and it's not actually happened, then you shouldn't be arrested. Mm. That doesn't seem to exist anymore. Everybody seems to just say, well, okay, where's the defense attorney? Where's the defense lawyers? Where are they? Yeah, no, and that is the very thing that uh, justice and uh, the rule of law isn't really implemented as it should be nowadays. And... Uh, Cool. Yeah, we have a, a fear of Titans here. He writes uh, in the super chat here. Thank you so much. He writes, even though we might have rivalry because I'm from Spain, you're a Brit right now. I stand with you. He writes, thank you so much for the super chat. And we also have, uh, I like the spike man. He also writes here in the super chat. Uh, Please give the nations to this fine woman who's standing for Britannia. God bless the both of you. Oh, is, that any, is that anything you have uh, any donation up where people can help you with? Um, uh, with the legal costs or anything like that, or is that anything you've been considering? I am, I that you know that's my biggest fear. I am desperate to find somebody who will actually defend me, try and help me. And obviously, I don't have. I am unfortunately, I don't have finances, and people are offering to help, which is you know, I it's it's awful to be in this position. It is really embarrassing to be in this position, but I'm in the position, and so. If anybody can help with anything, I absolutely am so grateful. Um, I've I, know, I know a good website you can use to uh, get uh, funding if you need. I can uh, send a link to you later if you want to set it up, and then people can uh, and yep. you can put that on Twitter and people can find it. I can link it as well if people want to help you. Um, so I have done to um, uh, PayPal. But it's Sorry? Just, I think it's PayPal that they... Uh, 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 there's other sites that are better than PayPal yeah. that you could use. I can use a website, link. Um, There's a donation thing there to, to help. But, um, oh, you have a website? I've got facedamy.com. Ah, okay. Well, I'll leave a link. I'll leave a link uh, to your website. So everyone watching this, if you want to find her website, I'll leave a link to her website after the stream is finished. Uh, basedamy.com. And that's where people can support you uh, if you need a... But I might actually, what your your thing might be better for me to use because I don't really feel confident with the one under PayPal. I'm not sure about that. There's, I've heard, you know, people saying that there might be an issue with it. So if you know something better, I, anything, anything that anybody can do, 
I really um because I feel I've never felt so vulnerable in my life in my own home. I just and I, I the thing is it's that it happens there's no warning. None, they don't obviously they're not gonna tell you if they're coming to arrest you. You know, it's like excuse me, five o'clock, they come in. And usually you have to do something wrong to expect even to be arrested. But you know, hey, who yeah. No, I'll, I'll I'll definitely leave a link to your website uh, in the com in the description below when 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 the stream is finished, so people can find you and help you out. So everyone watching this, remember that when it, when the stream is finished, I'll put the link below so you can find the website and go and uh, visit her. Uh, and also, I like the Spike Man again writes here um, that you should reach out to Count Ankula's lawyer. Um, you know, Count Ankula, maybe he could help. Uh, his lawyer maybe could help you as well. Uh, that could be an option. I have contact with Count Ankula, so I could maybe ask him for you if you want to see if you can get anything sorted. Um, is it, so I've, I heard there's apparently, by the way, sorry, I'm just changing the subject. I just think about it. There's a Tommy, apparently tomorrow at three o'clock, there's a. Good yes. Um, there is, there is a, a Downing Street at three o'clock yeah. tomorrow, there's going to be a demonstration in support of Tommy Robinson. So. Is that, and I also see at 12 o'clock tomorrow in London, there's a march from, this is what I think the connection from Parliament Square to the South African Embassy because of the bloody nightmare that's going on in South Africa that nobody in the mm. outside world seems to care about for the white farmers and the people are being slaughtered there. There's a march tomorrow. I, I okay. saw So, and then at three of, so I might be going to London tomorrow, Vida. I might just, you know, bob up in my, you know, decrepit state to just, Free Tommy, baby! We gotta get him out. I think we, you know, we, need, we need people. We need the good people of Britain, where there's millions of good people. The time is now to make yourselves be seen and heard because the media aren't gonna be there. The government certainly is, but numbers. I mean, when the DFLA, we were marching, we walked through London. I know the media completely ignored us, but it was seen. It was seen from the outside world, but the time now, with the abuse of power that's going on, the people, we have to, those of us who know what's going on, we've got to be seen. We've got to rally together and get together and just be, just en masse, go to the blooming parliament and just- I have to show your support that you don't uh, accept uh, the way, the way things are. And that's the way people, that's what people have to do, take out to, to the streets in protest and, uh, and uh, yeah, show, show, show the politicians what you, what you mean. But vis in a, vis in a, vis in a optics of if you see thousands upon thousands of people saying, you know, what is going on? This is not right. We are in a democracy. We have the rule of law, which is supposed to protect our our individual rights to of being free and being able to say. I mean, they say in in the free we have the technically speaking, Peter, we do have the freedom of speech. Twenty nine J of the Public Order Act, Section Three, Twenty nine J. Gives us an absolute right of freedom of speech. Before that, in section, or well, they've added little this, this, and that, and the other. It's all this hate speech stuff. But bizarrely, you've still got that whole thing that says you can criticize, you can say you don't like, you hate it, you think it's disgusting, you can say whatever you want, whether anybody's religion, their attitude. You have the total freedom, and it's still there in the in the law, and that's where. That's why I'm wondering where these lawyers are, that the, the defense solicitors, lawyers who care about civil rights, our freedoms, where the hell are you? Get out and start doing your bloody job. Because it's, you know, it's gonna affect everybody. This is what's so weird, Peter. People are still in this sort of, oh, it's not gonna happen to me, it's not gonna happen to you. Yes, it's well, gonna- it, it is happening to everyone now. They first they go yeah. to Tommy, Lauren Sard and all of those guys, and then it goes further and further down. That's the um, um, they use. You know, couldn't come because he's you know doesn't like people. Brittany, uh, Martin, you know, uh, and even the people like Robert Spencer, Pamela Geller, mm. Richard Gabriel, all these peaceful people. Cannot... Gert, Gert, Wil Gert Wilders wasn't allowed to visit the Gert UK. Wilders. I mean, what is going on, guys? We have to start. We have to. What I'm saying is, we need to get out there because nobody's listening. The media isn't listening. But if we Try and do some kind of gathering of thousands of people who really care of what is actually going on. And we know we have to get out and gather and protest because just talking to each other. And, and the problem is as well, Peter, is that there's all these little groups 
it's like there's five different little groups that all have the same objective, but because they're in the little groups, it doesn't really look like much. You need to mm. stop with the little little groups and just let's get one, you know, freedom freedom movement going, gather together and just get on with it and just say, enough is enough. Enough's enough. We've got to save our country. Save our democracy. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. No, that's, that's the thing I've seen in the UK. There's also these different so-called right-wing groups that just keep on fighting each other. Uh, yeah. If they were said more united, then maybe you could get more things done and uh, be a lot more effective. That's just my opinion. Um, we've been going, and we've been going for about an hour now here. Do oh my God, you, sorry. Maybe, I, I, you should start wrap this up, maybe. <laughs> la, 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 la. I could talk for I could talk for yeah. yeah. It's the Italian, Irish, Scottish. That's the American. Yeah, it's all that. Blood in me. <laughs> no, I, I was just, I just want to uh, have, I have a super chat here as well from Cave, Cave Creature. He writes, "Still saving you a spot on the island." Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure what he means by that, but thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to start trying to wrap this up. We're going for an hour. I think we got. Uh, I think you got. Uh, I think you got. Uh, yeah, I think you got. Uh, I think you got your story quite well here, especially in the beginning. Uh, so people. It's important this story gets out what happened because it can happen to anyone. Um, Just watch the video. Watch the video, guys. It's uh, it, my my periscope is um, Amy underscore Crazy World uh, with capital A C W. If you watch the video that says police and it's uh, exclamation mark question mark exclamation mark. It's just is that it did happen? It's happened yeah. as it happened and and. Yeah, we're in trouble. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll link to your sites uh, in below so people so people can find you and uh, pray for Tommy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, and yeah, just yeah. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, make sure to hit the like button on the video and subscribe and also follow uh, Amy on her Twitter and uh, visit the website as well. I have the I'll have the links in the description below. So thank you. Yeah, I think it's been a good discussion about the state of the UK right now. So. Um, yeah, we'll wrap this up here. Thank you so much for watching and uh, goodbye, everyone. Thanks a lot.